the time, 10 to 9. There is a dinner being held this weekend at a rather nice house in central London. It's a charity event, but with a difference. It's an effort to get something off the ground in this country that is quite commonplace in the United States. Big-time philanthropy, billionaires giving back. The man behind it is John Cordwell, the philanthropist and founder of phones for You, and he's on the line. Good morning to you, John. Good morning. What are you planning? Well, I... Like all charities, Cordwell Children has suffered dramatically through this pandemic and uh, at a time when people need even more help. Uh, so I came up with this idea quite a long time ago, about 18 months ago, of forming a very special group of individuals to become part of our life changes circle. Uh, and these people will be kind-hearted, philanthropic and donate a minimum of £100,000 per year for a 10-year period to uh, join this Life Changes Circle. And they get nothing back for that. It's pure philanthropy to really have the pride of knowing they are changing thousands of children's lives who suffer from horrible illnesses and, uh, and disabilities. Uh, and have you got the takers? I mean, do you know, have you, have you had replies to your invitation? Oh, absolutely, yes. You know, the, the, I wish a lot more people were philanthropic, but nonetheless, there's a lot of people that are. And I spend quite a lot of my life trying to influence people to join the Bill Gates uh, giving pledge to give at least 50% of their wealth away uh, after their lifetime or during it. And um, and encouraging people to pay the taxes in the UK and encouraging people to donate to charity. You know, rich people can really afford to do all of these things. And I, I believe um, that it's our moral obligation to do so. So I try and encourage people as much as possible. And when people join this Life Changes Circle, and we have already got three uh, members in spite of not having the dinners properly, yeah, um, they get <laughs> immense satisfaction of knowing that they are really improving children's lives and making a big difference. What is it that holds people back? Because, as you say, rich people, uh, well, they, I mean, in some cases, literally probably couldn't spend the money, don't, for various reasons, want to hand it on to kids and, and damage them with wealth. What is it that holds people back? Well, I think it's a whole range of, uh, uh, of uh, reasons. But, I mean, obviously, greed is in some places counting the money and wanting to be the richest you can possibly be. But wh what I try to do is show them that there's a spiritual satisfaction, a massive spiritual satisfaction in helping other people, changing other people's lives. And I think even the hardest-hearted person, if they saw some of the charity work we do, some of the ways we transform children's lives quite dramatically in some cases, it would definitely soften the heart, and it does do. And so, you know, it's a, it's a hard challenge to get people to think differently. Mm. It's not about amassing the most amount of money in your lifetime. It's what you do with that money and what spiritual satisfaction you get. Is it also it. getting the kind of drive? Because you think of all these moon rockets, Things well, they're not moon rockets, are they? <laughs> These edge of space rockets, Jeff Bezos and the rest. Yeah, I'm assuming you're not tempted to do that. I just wonder whether those sorts of things, in a sense, well, Prince William was suggesting earlier in the program, could be rechanneled a bit. Yes, absolutely. Look, look, it's each to their own, and these people can afford to do that and a lot more. Um, but it would be much better to uh, be looking after people on this earth, trying to make their lives better, or, of course, focusing on the environment, which is something that actually occurred to me in one of your previous programmes this morning, because you're talking about natural gas and whether to support it. Mm. Nobody mentioned the fact that how can we support an industry that's helping destroy the environment? You know, we really need to put the environment first. And any money the government might give into gas bailouts, don't use it for that. 